Now on BBC One, speak your mind in Points of View with Anne Robinson. Hello and good evening, and the programme of the decade. Do you think Mrs Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. 23 million people tuned in to watch as many as saw Torval and Dean miss out on an Olympic goal last year, which all goes to show that relationships, whether on ice or simply skating on thin ice, and the power of a woman are brilliant for bringing in television audiences. I think every strong woman in history has had to walk down a similar path, and I think it's the strength that causes the confusion and the fear. Why is she strong? Where does she get it from? Where is she taking it? Where is she going to use it? And where she took it was Panorama. The news of the sensational coup of the BBC's flagship current affairs programme broke at lunchtime last Tuesday. Strong opinions abounded in the press. Cancel BBC's Royal Charter, demand MPs. Or at least the ones the Daily Telegraph had spoken to. The secrecy with which the programme had been organised, recorded and edited, that is, without the knowledge of the chairman of the BBC, Mr Marmaduke Hussey, or its governors, was the nub of the debate in the broadsheets. BBC chairman deceived over Diana. Questions which need answering at Panorama. Crime writer P.D. James, herself a former governor, argued the interview had ignored the established and long-standing procedures for such broadcasts. They are based on trust between the palace and the BBC and a respect for the institution of monarchy. That trust has now been deliberately broken. Viewers joined in. A gentleman in Birmingham rang to comment that, in his opinion, the whole episode was... ...tantamount to treason, and I therefore feel under no obligation to pay my licence fee. Another considered... ...the BBC has finally been reduced to sleaze journalism. This interview should never have happened without the consultation of the Queen. But, as the closing titles of Panorama appeared on Monday night, the debate had moved on. Now, it was not should it have happened, but what did we think of her extraordinary revelations, including this? Did your relationship go beyond... A close friendship? Yes, it did. Yes. Were you unfaithful? Yes, I adored him. Yes, I was in love with him. But I was very let down. Astonishing. Refreshment was needed to help us take it all in. At 10.41, the national grid recorded a 1,000 megawatt surge. 300,000 kettles were being switched on. At least 15 million viewers were busy brewing. Even more remarkable, Newsnight on BBC Two, more used to an audience of around 800,000, found themselves with 8 million. It had the first live reaction. It came six minutes into the programme. It was delivered by the Minister for the Armed Forces, Nicholas Soames, in this case, speaking for the defence. But I can't account for what the princess was talking about when she referred to, 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 to those matters, um, for example, like mail interception. I mean, I simply don't know what she's talking about and about uh, telephones being tapped and all that. It, it really is uh, the sort of advanced stages of paranoia. So she's made it all up. She's I, paranoid. I, I've simply no idea, but it seems to me like the advanced stages of paranoia. That from Prince Charles's camp was indeed the very attitude the princess had complained about. And by yesterday morning, in contrast, Kilroy had the people's verdict. Prince Charles um, said exactly how he felt and what he was doing. That that she had the, the um, she was entitled to say how she felt. What game is the monarchy playing now? Tit for tat. Is that the sort of game that they're playing now? Yes, but he did start it, and I feel she has the right of response. No, he didn't. Dane, let Dane get it going, Dane. Go on. Well, I feel he did. He, he came out on television uh, and and talked about the most intimate details. On BBC Radio phone-ins, it was Diana as a mother and the wisdom of her being so frank in front of the children that became one of the main talking points, in particular the graphic description of her bulimia. You inflicted upon yourself because your self-esteem was to low ebb and you don't think you're worthy or valuable. You fill your stomach up four or five times a day, some, some do it more, and it gives you a feeling of comfort. It's like having a pair of arms around you, but it's temporarily temporary. Then you, you are disgusted at the bloatedness of your stomach and then you bring it all up again. On call Nick Ross, Hazel Clark from Sheffield. I watched sympathetically until Diana said, I want to be queen of people's hearts and that was it for me. She'd gone over the top and all I could think of then was those two boys. Both the parents had bared their souls and their marriages on television. How could she do it to her children? And Joanna Chivers. 
I was particularly incensed with the, um, the bit that I did see about her children and she wants to be close to her boys and the, the image that she's projected over the years of being a loving mother who'll do anything for her sons. Um, she'll teach them how to throw up so that they don't have to do what they want to. She'll teach them how to stamp their tiny feet. She'll teach them to lie. She'll teach them to manipulate their friends so that the world gets their side of the story. So, does the Princess of Wales deserve to be, as she wishes, Queen of Hearts? From Nick Ross to Anne and Nick, the debate continued. Mrs Kavanagh from Rugby says Diana's very dignified. The country has been waiting a long time for her to speak. Well done. Liz from Stockport says, I feel really sorry for her, which she was brilliant. From last night's programme, I don't think she got any love at all. If one of the corgis was ill, they would get more attention. But had all of us got the wrong end of the stick, had we missed the real story? What she's trying to do, is, of course, thrill me, is that she's trying to bring back love, the real love, the love which is, belongs to the heart and the soul, the Russians always say that, and also it's, it's a, the, the, the love which comes from God. Was that a dog or a muff on her lap? Love aside, as far as the duty log was concerned, a predictable army of calls complaining that the princess was endangering the very existence of the monarchy, but overwhelmingly outnumbered by those who rang to compliment her for being so brave and to congratulate the BBC for sharing the interview. On a serious point of order, the BBC deliberately gave the princess distressed makeup to make her look worse. To which Panorama can fairly cry not guilty. The princess did her own hair and makeup. The crew was at a minimum for the interview recorded on Sunday, November the 5th. One cameraman, two cameras, one of them under remote control. No sound man, that job was done by the producer, plus, of course, the reporter Martin Bashir. And by this morning, as opposed to last Friday, when, remember, MPs The Daily Telegraph spoke to thought the whole episode was beneath contempt, what was the verdict to the viewers? We went to Euston Station to ask, should the BBC have gone ahead and no permissions asked? If the BBC had informed the palace, the pressures for them to have modified it, cut it, either not made it, or indeed the pressures for put on the Princess of Wales to withdraw it in the first instance would have been huge. I don't see how they could possibly have done that. I think they should have consulted the palace before the programme went out. No, the palace shouldn't have been informed because she's her own person, she's got the right to make her own decision and she's not really a member of the royal family anymore. I think it would have been tactful and I think it was a very miserable wedding anniversary present for the Queen. If the palace had been informed, I think they would have found ways and means of stopping it from happening. So sometimes you have to use shock tactics if you want to win a war. And obviously, unfortunately, this seems to be turning into a war between two halves of one family. And how well, generally speaking, did Panorama pull it off? I thought it was very well handled. I thought the questioning was leading what I saw, and it gave the princess the opportunity to put her point of view. It appeared quite stark. It stuck to what it wanted to do, which was to interview her and give her space. Um, and I think that was sensible, perhaps. Um, it did isolate her, the way they put her in the middle of the room. I thought it was very measured, uh, allowed the people, to, for example, the first time, to find out what sort of personality Princess Di had, because most people weren't aware of that after sort of 15 years since she was married, whatever it was. I mean, that's, that's quite scandalous, actually. I thought they kept the questions moving, and so we got a lot of direct answers, um, and they kept it very clear to dates and precise facts, um, which made the picture, well, it built a picture for the public. And what have we learnt from all this? Well, as Bob Hoskins might say, it's good to talk. Panorama next week on American civil rights legislation. Normal points of view, non-royal also returns. But I'll leave you with a little bit of where it all began. <laughs>